Welcome to the Safe and Sound Scheme. Our little convicts and all the team today are representatives of the Arisia Dog Training Club based in Shropshire. Now don't be alarmed at anything you see during the display today as these scenes have been carefully rehearsed to highlight potential danger areas where dogs and children interact. And before we start, I'd like to introduce you to our bite protection officers. They're the ones waving the red danger flags and our officers will highlight any potential danger as it occurs. So now let's start at the greatest dog show in the world, Crufts. Right, well our children from Clarges Street Junior School are on a day trip to Crufts, just as you may be bringing some of your children today. And they've seen some fantastic displays, they've just seen the gun dogs in action and they saw the Good Citizen Dog Scheme. And they've been given some free time by the teacher. And he's told them, stay in groups, don't talk to strangers, don't leave the building and be back in an hour. But he's given them no instructions about safety around dogs. Now I see that some of our children have wandered around to the benching areas. This is where the display dogs are kept in between displays. And our children love dogs and they'd like to meet these dogs. But contrary to the rule of cru rules of Crufts, these children are unattended in this area and the dog has also been left on its own. Well, let's see what our convicts do when they'd like to meet a dog. Well, as you can see, they're running up to the dog. It's tied up to its bench, so it can't run away. It's gonna feel a little bit trapped and isolated. They're banging their feet, they're banging the floor, they're clapping, they're making woofing noises, they're whistling, they're trying to encourage the dog to come towards them. And look how close they're getting their faces towards the dog. Stop. Children, we should never approach unattended dogs, and Crufts is no exception. If you would like to meet a dog here at Crufts today, what should you do? Well, that's right. We adopt what we call the safe and sound approach, the safe hello. That is that we ask permission from the owner if we can stroke the dog. And once we have permission, we offer the dog the back of the hand to sniff so that the dog is confident that we don't pose a threat and comfortable with us being that close. And then we gently progress the stroking from there. That is the safe and sound approach. Well done, children. Right, well, having had a great day at Crufts, they've arrived back at school and they're on their way home. But they're going to go via the park and their route takes them past a fenced front garden. And in that front garden, there are some dogs busily minding their own business. Our children on the way have decided to stop and play outside the dog's garden. This has annoyed the dog slightly and they're now barking at the noise. But as always happens with children, their games have uh, developed into teasing, and they're uh, playing a teasing game. They've taken the mobile phone belonging to one of their group, and they're playing catch with it, not letting them have it. But oh no, one of them appears to have butterfingers, and the phone's gone over into the dog's garden. They're not going to want to tell mum and dad that they've lost their phone, are they? How are we going to get that phone back, boys and girls? Well, let's see what mischief our convicts get up to. Oh, there's an idea. Let's get a stick and poke it through the fence and try and pull the phone towards us, and then we can grab it and we'll, all, we'll have it back. But this only serves to make the dogs even more angry. You've got to work with me, folks. These are very angry dogs in the cages. So that hasn't worked. What else can we do? Oh, what are they up to now? Oh dear, stop right there. That noise you can hear is the noise of an ambulance that's coming for the child. Because what they've decided to do is pick the small one up and put them over the fence to collect the phone. But we know the dogs are already angry. They're probably displaying their guarding and territorial instincts and they will probably bite the child. The child will also be isolated in that garden with no uh, means of help. What should we have done, children? That's right. We should have ignored the dogs in the first place and just walked past them. And if we have lost our property in their garden, we should tell mum and dad, yes, they might be a little bit upset, but they'll be very happy to learn that you stayed safe and sound. Well done, children.
Right, our children finally arrive at the park gates, and they notice tied up to the gate a dog, all on its own. And we've already learnt our children love dogs, they enjoy their day at Crufts, and they want to meet the dog. Puppies and young dogs are often very attractive for young people to go and want to cuddle and, and stroke. So they've gone up to stroke the dogs. But look what our convicts are doing now. Some of them have sweets and they want to share their sweets with the dogs, so they're down on the floor, offering these dogs all these very sugary sweets. They're calling to the dog, they're down on their hands and knees. Look how close some of them are getting their faces to these dogs. This is a very dangerous situation. Stop. Children, we've already learned that we should never approach unattended dogs, should we? What should we have done? That's right, we learnt it earlier. We adopt the safe and sound approach. We ask permission from the owner if we can stroke the dog. And if there is no owner present, then we shouldn't go near the dogs. We should ignore them. But on this occasion, the owner's come back from the shop and the children have said, can I stroke your dog, please? Yes, you may. So they hold out the back of the hand for the dog to sniff so that it is confident we don't pose a threat and comfortable with us being that close. And then we gently progress to stroking from there. That was that safe and sound approach. Well done, children. And finally, our children make it into the park where they have a great time meeting their friends, they're playing ball, they can play chase, they can eat their sweets and they can generally chill out and expend the rest of that energy that they have after a hard day at school. And they're having great fun. Now, park users, uh, parks and open spaces up and down the country are generally frequented by dog owners to exercise dogs and children for play and recreation. And for the most part, they got on with sharing it quite well. But let's see what happens to our little convicts when they receive unwelcome attention from a dog. That's right, we adopt the position that we call the safe and sound tree. That is that we drop everything we have in our hands, we stand straight and still, fold our arms across our chest, head down, and we look and act boring. And we wait for the dog to go away or for somebody to come and help us. Well done, boys and girls. Now, folks, you should never let your dog become a nuisance to others. And if you ever need help in controlling your dog, the Kennel Club Good Citizen Dog Scheme runs courses throughout the UK to help dog owners teach their dogs to become socially acceptable. You can find out more details from them at their stand here at Hall 3. But sometimes the tree is not enough to keep us safe. So we're going to look at that scene again. And we've got a couple of big kids joined our children to play ball in the park. And let's see what happens this time when we receive continued attention from an over-exuberant dog. That's right, if we're knocked over to the ground, we adopt what we call the safe and sound stone. We drop everything we have in our hands. When we fall to the ground, we curl up like a ball, knees under our chest, elbows tucked in, face down, and we look and act boring, and again, wait for the dog to go away or for somebody to come and help us. That's the safe and sound stone. Well done, children. And finally, after a very long and hard day, the children arrive at home. Let's see what trouble awaits. Right, well here we have a typical family scene after a very long and hard day. Children are in the living room, sitting on the floor, watching TV. The dog's parked itself in amongst them and has fallen asleep. Mum's sat on the sofa with the other dog and she's on the phone to her friend Doris. A very calm and serene scenario, one that I'm sure is typical for most of you. But she doesn't want to disturb the children's viewing of the TV, but she can't hear Doris on the phone. So she's going to go out of the room to continue her phone call, leaving the dog and the children on their own. Now, one of the children is feeling a bit peckish, so off they go to the kitchen to get themselves a snack. So back they come with their snack, and they'd like to sit on the sofa to eat their food. But the dog has sprawled out on the sofa. So, how are we going to get the dog off? 
Well, yes, we could try commanding it first, couldn't we? But that doesn't seem to be working. What should we do now? Let's try and tempt it with some of our food, and then when it jumps off, we can jump in its place, quick. No, that doesn't seem to be working either. What about a toy? Squeak a toy, throw it for the dog. No, that's not working. What else can we do to move the dog from the sofa? Oh, stop children, stop. Child was just about to grab the collar and pull the dog from the sofa. A potentially dangerous situation and one in which the child would probably be bitten. The dog would, is highly unlikely to respond to the child's commands. It won't see the child as the pack leader. Teasing the dog with food and toys will also just annoy it. And then grabbing it by the collar may encourage the dog to bite them. And again, look how close their faces are to the dog's face. What should we do in this situation, boys and girls? That's right, we should call for a parent, shouldn't we? Mom! Dad! That's it, and in this case, Mum comes back, puts the phone down while she calms the dog down, takes the dog off the sofa, commands it to stay on the floor, and now the child can sit on the sofa and eat its food. And that way we all stay safe and sound. Well done, boys and girls. But Mum, of course, is still engaged in that phone call. So having calmed the situation down, off she goes out of the room again to continue with her call. Now the TV program has ended and the children are getting a little bit bored. So they start playing in the living room. You know what that's like, folks. Leave them alone for five minutes. What will they get up to? So they're starting to play, but it's getting a little bit boisterous. They're running around, they're screaming and shouting. We've got one child trying to cuddle the dog that's fast asleep on the floor. The others are running around over the dog, very close to the dog. The dog's becoming very, very excited. And this is potentially dangerous. Stop. Children, we should never disturb sleeping dogs. If we try to cuddle a dog that's asleep, it will wake up slightly disorientated, perhaps a little bit startled, and perhaps a little bit frightened. And it will probably bite you. And if we overexcite the dog through our play, it may jump up to start taking the toys we're playing with and it might just bite us at the same time. The situation has got out of control, boys and girls. What do we need to do now? Mom? Dad? That's right. Call for an adult again to come in and calm the situation down. And here we see mum returning. She calms the children down and then calms the dogs down. And that way we all stay safe and sound. Well done, boys and girls. Well, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we're coming towards the end of our very short demonstration on the Kennel Club Safe and Sound Scheme. But before we leave you, we'd like to remind you of three very important points from our demonstration. And we'd love you to go home and show this to your children, your grandchildren, your nephews and nieces. In fact, any child that you come into contact with, because we would like to keep all children safe and sound around dogs. The first was that safe and sound approach, the safe hello. If we'd like to meet a dog, we ask permission from the owner first. Once we have permission, we offer the dog the back of the hand to sniff so that it is confident that we don't pose a threat and comfortable with us being that close. And then we gently progress the stroking from there. Next, we had the safe and sound tree. If we receive unwelcome attention from a dog, we adopt the tree. We drop everything we have in our hands, we stand straight and still, fold our arms across our chest, head down, and we look and act boring. And we wait for the dog to go our way or for somebody to come and help us. And finally, if we are knocked to the ground by an over-exuberant dog, we adopt the safe and sound stone. We curl up like a ball on our fronts, tuck our knees and elbows in, face down, and again, we look and act boring, and we wait for somebody to come and help us or for the dog to go away. Well done, boys and girls, dogs and handlers. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes our short demonstration on the Kennel Club Safe and Sound Scheme. Please remember never to leave a small child alone with a dog. If you'd like to find out more information about the scheme, then please visit us at our stand in Hall 3 here today, or visit us at the website www.safeandsoundwithdogs.org.uk, where you and your child can take part in the online Safety Factor Challenge game and see how safe and sound you can be. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been my pleasure to present to you Kennel Club is safe and sound scheme.